To promote the rapid evolution of robots, one audacious group of researchers decided to start a worldwide competition. It's called RoboCup, and it's soccer like you've never seen it before. The robots move on wheels. They see with cameras. But most important, they're fully autonomous. They are not being run by remote control. Once they're programmed, they decide how and where to move all by themselves. Professor Manuela Veloso from Carnegie Mellon University is one of the tournament's founders. I think that RoboCup was tremendous in terms of pushing the limits of what we were doing much ahead. You go into these fields, our robots go there. We never saw the other robots before. We have no clue what they will be doing at the strategy level. We don't know how they move. Now we have to program our robots to cope with that uncertainty. <laughs> The RoboCup tournament was designed with an ambitious long-term goal. In 50 years, the founders hope to field teams of humanoid robots that are smart and agile enough to beat a team of human soccer players. And not just any humans, the World Cup champions. <laughs> Clearly, they have a ways to go. At Carnegie Mellon, Veloso and her group are assembling their robot team for the upcoming championships. I want perception, action, and cognition. I want them to do complex tasks. I want them to achieve goals. I want them to actually move, see, but also do something. I mean, I like the do part, you know, because, you know, the robots, if they are there just to see, then what do they need to know that's the door if they don't go through the door? To win, the bots need more than speed and power. They need the ability to navigate, orient themselves, find the goal, and score. This year, Veloso and Professor Tucker Balch are devising their team's new secret weapon, a kind of mind meld. It's known as distributed data, information pooled and shared among the entire team even when a robot's vision sensors are masked, it can still see. It's getting the view from its teammates. This concept may well define the future of robotics. For while one robot alone may not amount to much, they are remarkably potent as a team, merging information, dividing up tasks. One mind, many bodies. The old days of thinking that a single robot would be fully operational and fully capable, I think, are gone. We realize that it's hard to have technology that, you know, will mimic our capabilities to that level. A single computer, a single camera, a single sensor. This year, the new world champs will be crowned in Melbourne, Australia. Twenty teams from four different continents fighting it out for the World Cup of Robotics, the trophy of the future. Right from the start, emotions are running high for Manuela and her colleagues. But once the whistle blows, the robots play the entire game on their own. Their designers can only stand back and cheer. Manuela's Carnegie Mellon team in blue phases off against a squad from Germany's Freiburg University. The Carnegie Mellon bots may be smart, but the Germans are way too quick. 
they win five to nothing. And once the Germans start rolling, they knock off the defending champs from Iran and move into the finals. The championship round pits them against an Italian team with a cutting edge wheel design in a match that's sure to be close. down to penalty kicks. a game of robotics is going to take much more. For all the great strides these robots have taken, it's clear what they lack. Passion, emotion, the will to win. They play the last minute exactly the same way they played the middle minute or the first minute. They have no cause of doubt, you know, speeding up for the last minute to try to make it or whatever. So it's missing a little bit of the emotional aspect that humans have while they play a game because they push it at the end. They push it. I mean, if they are winning, they relax more. If they are losing, they are more aggressive. All of that we don't have yet. <laughs> 